As chair of the House and Ways and Means Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic in accordance with House Rule 67 and the governor's emergency order number 12 pursuant to executive order 2004, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. This is a work session on two House bills, House Bill 10 and House Bill 15. And also an executive session on these bills may be held. Please note that there is no physical location for members of the public to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that all members of the committee and select legislative staff have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through the Zoom electronic meeting platform and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary, participate in this meeting by the Zoom platform or by telephone. All necessary access information has been made available on the house calendar and through the electronic calendar on the general court website. <clears throat> the notice for this meeting complies with the house rules and RSA 91A. Anyone who has a problem accessing the meeting should call 271-3600 or email hcs at leg.state.nh.us. In the event the public is unable to ac access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. I want to introduce the staff that are on the meeting to assist us, Jennifer Flora and committee researcher, or the committee researcher. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call of attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Representative Bernstein, please take the, the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning to you and good morning to everyone. It's March the 3rd, 2021, 9 a.m. It's a beautiful day in the Granite State. Let's begin roll call with Representative Patrick Abrami. Here in my home in Stratum, uh, my wife's in the house. <clears throat> Accepting the award for Mary Griffin is Representative Janine Nodder. I'm um, at my home in Merrimack, and it's just uh, me and my dog right now. Representative Olery. Uh, present home, Hudson, wife is in the house someplace. Representative Russ Ober. Representative Ober. Representative, Representative Doucette. Good morning. I'm on my uh, mobile device in Concord. Good morning. Your humble clerk is Alan Burstein, and I'm here in my home office in Nottingham, New Hampshire. Representative Robert Elliott. Uh, here in my uh, home, and my wife uh, in Salem is somewhere in the house. Thank you. Representative Janigian. Yes, I'm here. I'm home in Salem, and my wife is somewhere in the house. Representative Herschel Nunez. Good morning, Representative Burstein. Thank you. I am home alone in Pelham. Representative Tim Baxter. Thank you, Representative. I'm home alone. Representative Terry Spilsbury. Good morning, home alone in Charlestown. Representative Paul Tudor. I'm home in Northwood. Uh, my wife is in the house. Representative Susan Almy. Home alone in Lebanon. Representative Richard Ames. I'm here in Jaffrey in my home office. Representative Thomas home. Southworth. Here in Dover, alone. Good morning. Representative Dennis Malloy. Home in uh, Greenland, alone. You look sharp this morning, Representative. Um, Representative Schamberg. Uh, I'm alone, and I'm in the New London Hospital parking lot. Representative Edith Tucker. Unmute, Representative. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, I'm home alone in Randolph where it's snowing hard. <laughs> Thank you for the weather report. Representative Jeannie Gamarlo. Jenny Gamarlo. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I am home in Swansea alone. <laughs> Representative Thomas Laufman. Representative Laufman. Representative Amanda Gord. Good morning. I am present and alone. Representative Mary Hacken Phillips. Good morning. I'm coming to you live from my office in Concord alone. 
Representative James Murphy. Good morning, I'm in Hanover at my uh, home office alone. And, rep and Chairman Norman Major. Good morning, I'm in my office in my home and my wife is in the house. Mr. Chair, there are 22 members present, two are absent. Thank you, Representative. This morning, we are going to deal with two bills left over from yesterday, House Bill 10 and House Bill 15. I've had a discussion uh, on House Bill 10 with our leadership and because House Bill 10 also uh, it deals with reduction in business taxes, both the BPT and the BET, and then the governor's budget has the BET reduction in it halfway. That is recommend that we retain this bill. Doesn't mean you have to, but <clears throat> That's the way our leadership feels. Um, so, Representative Bromley, do you have a motion? I make a motion to retain House Bill 10. Representative Bromley makes a motion to retain House Bill 10, which is an act relative to the rates of business profits tax and business enterprise tax, seconded by. I'll second that. Representative Eurley. And I had such a nice blurb already written up. <laughs> oh, save it. Um, Representative Bromley, do you, anything you want to say on that? Uh, I think it's uh, prudent of us to, to wait and see what happens with the budget and the, uh, the various tax cuts that are in the budget. And uh, we can hold this in abeyance and, and pull it out if we need it later on. Any other questions or comments on House Bill 10? Any other questions or comments on House Bill 10? If not, then I'll ask the clerk to call the vote on House Bill 10 and the motion is to retain. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's begin the roll call vote on HB 10 with Representative Abrami. Yes. Representative Nodder. Yes. Representative Ullery. You're muted. Gotta move my cursor over there. <laughs> yes. Representative Ober is not present. The clerk votes yes. Representative Doucette. Didn't hear yes. Oh, thank you. Representative Elliott. Yes. Representative John Janigian. Yes. Representative Herschel Nunez. Yes. Representative Tim Baxter. Yes. Representative Terry Spilsbury. Yes. From Northwood, Representative Paul Tudor. Yes. Representative Susan Almy. Yes. Representative Richard Ames. Yes. Thank you. Representative Tom Southworth. Yes. Representative Dennis Malloy. Yes. Representative Thomas Schamberg. Yes. Representative Edith Tucker. Yes. Representative Jenny Gomarlo. Yes. Representative Tom Laufman. Yes. Good morning. Representative Amanda Gordon. Yes. Representative Mary Hacken Phillips. Yes. Representative James Murphy. Yes. And Chairman Major. Yes. Mr. Chair, the vote to retain HB 10 
can't be 23 to nothing with one member not voting. The vote being 23 to nothing to retain the bill, the motion passes. Thank you. We have a good morning this morning. The last bill is House Bill. And I have a question, Representative uh, Baxter. Were you able to get that amendment? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so as I communicated with you yesterday, um, I talked to um, the DRA and we agreed upon language. And essentially what we did is my amendment originally talked about the provider, so um, travel safe service agents, but this amendment it makes it cleaner and it just changes it to looking at um, the charge. That way you can't basically be wholly exempt if part of your business is a travel service um, agent agency. So that was the change they recommended and I thought their proposed language was fine. So the only hang up right now is it's already been submitted to OLS. They just need to review it. Um, so I would recommend that we wait until we get it back from OLS and next week we can vote on the amendment and then pass the bill. That way, hopefully this can end up on consent um, and it won't take up any time on the floor. Any comments from the committee members? Oh, and, and Mr. Chair, real quick, I CC'd you on that last email, the last two emails to OLS, so you'll have that in your inbox. When did you do that? Uh, one was yesterday afternoon, towards the end of the day after we had the, we agreed upon the proposed language, and then this morning as well. And the one yesterday I forwarded to all the members of the committee. Okay. Um, Representative Elmy, you're muted. Sorry, the one the one you forwarded to us on I was not entirely sure which language from that long email was supposed to be being considered and which wasn't. Can we maybe at least get a a clean copy of that? Perhaps Representative Baxter could send what he what he sent to OLS to all of us right now or put it up on the screen or something. Yeah, I, I should be able to do that right now for you, Representative. Thank you. Janine, uh, would he have sharing capability? Just granted that, yes. Good. <laughs> Mr. Chair? Yes. So I've got the email up, but how do I share it? A screen share, hold on. Janine? Um, I that, think that I'm getting bottom. it right now. Yeah. Can you guys see? Yep. Yes, you might make okay. it bigger. You see it there, Tim. Just make it bigger? Yes. Bit. Yes. One of the uh, lucky parts about being young is I have good eyesight <laughs> for now. Maybe go back because now the whole thing isn't showing. Okay, let's. I'll say when. I think it's show. Or just scroll down a little bit. Yeah, there you go. And so it's just from right here where my cursor is, right? 
that's the changes right there. So what was added was what in what is in L? Yes, exactly. And essentially what what they what they were doing is my original amendment was talking about the occupation travel service agents, but there was the issue that that might wholly exempt someone that a small part of their business is then being a travel service agent, which would not was not what was intended. So this changes it to the uh, looking at the charges. So amounts paid by an operator to a travel agent or commission, and then exempt that the term rent shall not include amounts paid by an operator to a travel agent as commission or compensation for travel agent services. So looking at the actual service itself. So uh, what has been sent over to the LOS is um, what's in yellow added? Yes. Yeah, this is, this is from OLS, the email I sent to OLS itself. So this is, this is how the amendment will look. But I imagine we can meet um, back next week. I don't know when OLS will, will send something over. It could even be tomorrow if we could all meet tomorrow, but it, it shouldn't take uh, that long once, once we have something back from OLS. We haven't been noted to meet tomorrow, but we will be meeting. Oh my God, I think get it scheduled uh, on the 10th, which would be a week from today. Because next Tuesday is election day, everybody is going to be busy with their election. So this could be taken up on election day. If Everybody agreeable to this? So, so Mr. Chair, um, this is uh, Representative Ames. If, if I may go forward. Um, yeah, the, uh, this looks good to me on the face of it, uh, but uh, it looks like we'll have a little time to look closely at it. So I think the, the, the plan would be to go into executive session, presumably maybe a little prior discussion when we next meet, which would be Wednesday next week. Um, and, uh, and then uh, unless some wrinkle is identified, we're off and running. Um, that's the way I would understand it. We don't have the actual amendment in front of us uh, yet. And uh, so we should process it, something like that. And I think we've got plenty of time um, since we don't have a scheduled have a session yet. So, Mr. Chairman, Representative, Allen. you have uh, Representative Nunes and Representative Spilsbury wanting to talk, and it might be better if they do it today rather than wait till to Wednesday. But I think the uh, chair was going to respond to what I just said. Come next Wednesday, I think we need to take a vote and examine whether the amendment is not ready or not. Because if it's not ready, we should be able to exec it because it can always have a floor amendment. The floor amendment could have the support of the whole committee, you know, if it's agreeable. But I think we need to move this thing out. But as far as discussion, uh, we're open to discussion right now. This is a work session. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, did you call on me, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, I, I just, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have, a, I have a question for Representative Baxter. In your conversation with, um, with DRS, did, did did you guys work out the way that they would be looking at the rules uh, that would be created going towards the rules committee? I'm taking it, I, I want to take it for granted this is going to fix that, but I want to hear it from you guys that this is going to uh, ease, ease up the, the conflict that she was talking about, that the, uh, the assistant commissioner was talking about for 
um, making the rules off of off of the statute. Yeah, thank you, Representative. I think we uh, this process basically she put in an amendment that she'd be comfortable with that would have um, what she was saying she felt that could be accomplished in rules. So I think it's sort of just ironing out some of those details ahead of time instead of doing it in the rules process. That's basically how I took it. Um, I looked over the language she sent back and I actually thought it was, it was a better approach than my amendment originally and it ironed out the concerns that she had and that other members had. So I, I think it's just, it's much simpler and easier. And in terms of whether we exec this today or we wait till the 10th, um, a big thing that's going on is just our time on the floor. And if we can get this out um, unanimous, mm -hmm. or maybe there might be one person or something like that that doesn't vote for it, it could go on consent. And that's going to save us a lot of time versus if we have to have a floor amendment, if it's not unanimous, if we have to debate this or whatever on the floor, I would rather just wait to the 10th, take five minutes and ex exec it out and have it be on consent. So that's just my suggestion for um, for the chair, and, and I'm happy to hear what other members of the committee think about that as well. And thank you, Representative, for your question. Thank you for the answer. Are you all set, uh, Representative Nunes? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, I'm great, thank you. Okay, Representative Spilsbury. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, I appreciate what uh, Representative Basker, the facts you're trying to do. And I do think that this approach is better than, uh, than the one we were looking at yesterday. So uh, my fear was that uh, amending the definition of operator was gonna largely gut the intent of the bill. So now we're, we are uh, proposing to amend the definitions of uh, gross rental receipts and uh, elaborate on full retail price charge. My concern is that take gross rental receipts. What this then does is lists three things and now a fourth that um, are not to be included in a gross rental receipt. And those are things like separate charges for insurance or for fuel. That's very logical. I think this amendment though invites the operators to begin stating um, booking commissions as a separate charge to remove them from the wheels and rooms rather than to leave them in. And uh, as far as you know, I can see the normal business practice is that uh, a, a room operator or car rental operator grosses up their charges, determines their profit level, decides what they're going to charge the customer, and then pays their expenses, including booking commissions. So I, I'm still not totally comfortable with this. And, and I guess where I would go with, with my doubt is back to Carolyn Lear's note, where she says, we think that the bill is reasonably clear as it is, and gives us the uh, power uh, in the rulemaking authority to clarify things. Now, in the rulemaking authority, they can be much more granular, specific, take testimony, and uh, take comments on a proposed rule. And I don't think we're in a position here to deal with it as carefully as they would. So I think there are ambiguities that remain. Um, and so again, you know, with uh, full respect for what Representative Baxter is attempting to do, I think we could probably better leave the DRA to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, Representative Yearly. What is the uh, our time schedule on this bill, uh, Mr. Chair? Can we wait until the 10th or is there Got to be done sooner than that, or the eleventh is the last day to report all house bills in the second committee, except the budget bills. So the the tenth, here I have one day after that. 
So we either voted up or down on the uh, uh, with amendment or without an amendment on the 10th. Other than that, we're going to have to scroll around with it on the floor if anyone has any objections. I just wanted that to be clear to the members. Okay. The um, other thing is, sir, in the past, the committee has done things uh, pending uh, uh, OLS approval. Uh, do we want to consider that now, or do you think we have plenty of time on the 10th to uh, mesh this out? I was going to throw that out, but I thought I'd wait to hear from everybody. That's an option. I, I don't know how legal it is, but it's an option. Uh, Mr. Well, Chair, Mr. Chair, just to follow up, uh, to, to help everybody and to, to help uh, uh, Representative Baxter, uh, would it be appropriate that we get a, a sense of the committee uh, at this point so that he knows um, what, uh, how we feel, basically? Uh, yes, we can do that. Um, but why don't we wait until everybody makes their comments? And, and we'll get back to that. Thank you, sir. Okay. And thank you. Representative Southwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. It seemed to me before your plan about um, completing this bill on the 10th after we probably will have the amendment seemed fine. Now it seems like we're looking at other options, but um, it seemed like your original comments about that were going to work fine. And on the 10th, we can go up or down on the amendment and then up or down on the bill and we're done. That's, that's the committee's choice. Okay. So I support that suggestion from you. All right, thank you. Representative Alamy. Thank you. Um, if I can remember now what I was trying to, when I put my hand up before. Uh, this, um, I think that it would be useful if we could get on, on Ms. Lear to get on, on uh, into this conversation right now. To, to talk to us about the, the uh, problem that might be caused by putting that uh, first part of the amendment in. The second part of the amendment doesn't look like it's a problem. The first one is in a place where everything else has been uh, put on the receipt. Um, I think that it, since she agreed to it before, she'd be okay, but it would be helpful, I think, if we had that resolved now so that we don't, if we try to go back with an amendment on the 10th, there are probably going to be a lot of committees doing that right then. Janine, can you let uh, Carolyn Lear in? Carolyn, were you able to listen to the uh, Make debate? It. Carolyn? Hi, Representatives. Carolyn Lear, um, Assistant Commissioner at the Department of Revenue here. I've been listening to the discussion, um, but I think it would be helpful to, uh, if Representative Almi could repeat the specific question that she was wishing for me to answer. Unmute yourself, uh, Susan. Yes, I was trying to get the, the language back up. I took a screenshot of it. <laughs> I had emailed that to you yesterday. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to update you real quickly. I just got an email um, from Jeff from OLS and he said he's gonna send it out as soon as possible. So we might get that, you know, within the next hour. Okay. Susan, have you... Uh... 
I'm sorry, I don't seem to be able to both look at the language and unmute myself. Um, Can we do a share on this? Yes. Yeah. Janine? Here, here, I think I'm doing a workaround now. But a share on the screen would be nice. Can you? Yeah. Um, maybe Representative Baxter can put his back up. Yeah, I can do that right now. Thank you. So on um, the second yellow part seems like it doesn't have any problem at all. The question is whether it's a problem that uh, the first yellow part, D, uh, amounts paid by an operator to a travel agent as commissioner compensation is out of sync with the rest of that section, which is separate charges, or whether it's okay. Um, I, te I tend to agree with you um, that A through C very clearly deal with... Um, charges that are paid by the consumer and section D is explicitly dealing with charges um, that are paid by the operator to a travel agent as commission. Um, I don't know from a drafting standpoint whether um, that will be seen as a fatal issue Hopefully, um, OLS will will weigh in on that. Um, it, it just seemed as though the only logical place, um, if you <clears throat> to um, add that language, to do so. Would it be possible to just stick? I don't know what it would be. Uh, Roman six A. Uh, or something like that, to just stick in at the bottom amounts paid by an operator to a travel agent's commissioner compensation for the travel agent's services on shall not be considered part or something like that part of this um, of gross rental receipts. I'm sorry, Representative. I'm not sure that I followed. My brain must be working a little slow this morning. Yeah, well, mine is not too happy either. <laughs> so on um, there to have a second section under Roman six that just says amounts paid by an operator to a travel agent as commission or compensation for the travel agent services on um, are not part of gross rental receipts. From my perspective, that wouldn't change the meaning. Um, so that would be fine. I would defer to OLS on which mm -hmm. would be preferred from a drafting standpoint. Yeah. Well, that perhaps Representative Baxter could follow that up. Representative Almi, can you just repeat the, the question that you wanted me to address specifically? Um, under Roman six, uh, you've got gross revenue receipts means, and the term shall not include A through C. And then on uh, somehow after Roman 6, Roman 6A or whatever it is that they could do, uh, amounts paid by an operator to a travel agent on uh, shall on uh, on uh, on uh, is not considered as part of gross rental receipts or some such wording. Okay, so to clarify, you just want it in a slightly different spot. Um, hopefully that will provide some clarity. That's kind of what you're, you're looking well, for. I was trying to, to address, I think it's Representative Spielberg's points, point, that it is, is not part of the charges paid by the consumer. It would be a separate section, Roman uh -huh. 6B. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I can, I just want to speak to real quick Representative Spilsbury's um, his uh, concerns. 
And it was, it was my understanding that the way this was written um, by Carolyn, the DRA felt comfortable through the rulemaking process that this would have the outcome that was intended. Um, and so I would just want to ask to her again, it, it, you know, if she still feels comfortable with this amendment, that it's not going to lead to any unforeseen outcomes like the ones Spilsbury's potentially concerned with. <laughs> yes, Representative Baxter, with this language, I feel comfortable that either rules won't be necessary or if we do determine that rules are necessary, that we'll be able to um, clearly enact what the committee is intending. Thank and you. I agree with that too. It's Representative Spilsbury that has the point. Uh, if I can jump in again. Yes, Representative Spilsbury. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the incongruity is this. Roman numeral six is a definition of gross rental receipts. Gross rental receipts are amounts paid by the customer to the operator. But little d, which has been added, has nothing to do with gross rental receipts. It's simply a statement, I believe, that a particular expense is not going to be taxed twice. Clearly an amount paid by the customer to the operator is subject to the tax. And if we're trying to say anything here, it's that when the operator then goes and pays the commission, it's not taxed a second time. Uh, it really doesn't fit in a definition of gross rental receipts. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, Representative. Uh, Representative Spilsbury, a lot of things that we do writing tax law are CYA in nature. That is, or belts and suspender is the more um, acceptable term, I, understand, I suppose. That is, yeah, it may not belong there, but we're saying it anyway so that you get the message. Uh, it's kind of a yeah, your belt holds your pants up, and so do your suspenders. You don't need both, but a lot of people do. And this, we do. And I think that's what Section D is. It's a belts and suspenders approach. So that if, if a gel car ever gets a chance to look at this, they'll look at it and say, well, they mean that commission doesn't count because they said it here and they said it here and they said it everywhere. So that's kind of what it is. Yeah, it may not exactly fit where it is, but it does clarify because it doesn't fit. I, that's my take on this. I Thank you, Mr. Follow that Very briefly, um, I take your point, but I think this one is not so much uh, an example of what you're saying. I think this is going to be read to give the wrong message and it's going to it's going to basically say go ahead and list this charge separately and you'll be fine and it'll be exempt from tax and the gross amount that the customer pays will be reduced by this figure but, you know what's subject to tax anyway and i think i've made my point i don't want to belabor it okay representing names You're muted, Dick. Yeah, got it. Um, I guess this is maybe asking the question that we're exploring in a different way, but I just want to ask uh, Carolyn Lear um, whether there is any danger that a travel agent working with an operator could have essentially game this system and uh, effectively reduce the rent that's subject to the tax and raise the uh, travel agent compensation number that is that is not subject to the tax. Good question. Thank you for the 
question, Representative. Um, <clears throat> it sounds like you all um, saw the email that I sent to Representative Baxter yesterday. Um, and before I, I suggested the um, language that you have before you, I did try to reiterate the point that I do think it's clear under the statute um, without any additional language that amounts paid, um, that the, the, the tax only captures amounts paid by the consumer um, and doesn't um, capture in the tax base amounts paid um, between the operator and any service provider because um, it's a tax on a consumer transaction. Um, I only say that because I think, of course, inherent in adding any language is the risk that someone will find a way to um, utilize it to um, potentially exempt a transaction that they um, that we don't intend to be exempt. I think that's always a risk, and certainly could be a risk with this language as well. I mean, I've certainly, because that's my job as the tax administrator to um, try to propose something that I thought was uh, as tight as it could be. Um, but my answer would be that, that that is always a risk. Thank you. Representative Southwick followed by Representative Alamey. You're muted. I know, I, it wasn't. It's not the muting, it's my finger like most people. Um, I just wanted to clarify um, with Ms. Lear, going back to the original bill, um, at that point, you felt it was fine without an amendment and you thought rules could handle it. And I just wanna make sure from your perspective that that choice is still on the table to just pass the bill and send it to rules. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Representative. Um, yes, I agree with that statement. Um, I, I don't think that um, an amendment is necessary to achieve or clarify um, what this amendment seeks to clarify. I think that um, the statute does make clear that commissions paid by the operator to a travel agent um, aren't, is not taxable and I do think it's clear enough that I would be comfortable saying that we have the authority to enact rules to such effect. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Elmy. Thank you. I wanted to address on something, I think it was Representative Olery said, I do not think that a lot of travel agents would want to have their commission on, on public documents that the, that the uh, customer sees. I've never seen them do that kind of thing. The commissions are always kind of hidden in the background. Um, if we had to do something like this, could we maybe change D to any amounts paid uh, that appear as a charge? which probably doesn't happen, but may happen. Does anybody else have any comments or questions? And I think we've got to address an issue here. Is what we've heard from the commissioner is that she feels comfortable with the bill as is and that any issue with it can be taken care of through the rules. And then we also have the other thing that, you no, know, we need to have an amendment. So I'd like to find out from the committee how the members of the committee feel. Should we go the route of no amendment or, the, or wait and put an amendment in? Can we take down screen share? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is not an official vote, but it is. 
it's an in indication how the members feel. So, first of all, I'd like to get the feeling of who, who would, and then you can vote twice if you want. Who would vote for this without an amendment? Could uh, we raise our hands? Yes. Virtually or? or, or, or let's do it this way. Uh, if you are against putting this in without an amendment, is off to pass. Uh, raise your hand. Say it again, Norm. Say it again. If you are against putting this in as ought to pass without an amendment, raise your hand. In other words, for the amendment. <laughs> no? Well, no? No. The opposite. No, yeah. no. Yeah. no. I don't know. We've got to be clear That's on this. If you are against, well, I, uh, yeah. let's say, if you're for this without an amendment, raise your hand. And keep them up. Sorry, sorry. If you, yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven. Six, eight. And 11. Mr. Chair, my hand's up, but my camera's up. From, uh, Thomas Yearly. Let's just pull them up again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay. If you uh, want to see this bill pass with an amendment, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. They, they keep changing the pictures here. One, I know. Four, five. Honestly, if you just use the raise hand function. Maybe, maybe we should use that function. I agree. It gives yeah. you the right at the top of where the panelists are. Okay, use your raised hands function. If you want this bill to pass with an amendment, use your raise hand function. With the amendment. So the way you're saying it, we aren't allowed to vote twice. <laughs> okay, raise hand function. If you want the amendment, I see one, two, three, four, five. I thought there was more hands than that. That's six. It's six. Okay. If you do not want to see an amendment, raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Good. It's, a, it's almost like a, a two to one without the amendment. Now, Mr. Chairman, could you ask if um, the people who want an amendment would be willing to go to the floor for that? Do we have, because you were been trying to get something on consent. All right. If it went to the floor without an amendment, Who would oppose it on the floor? Mr. Chairman, Representative Schamberger. Representative Schamberger, what? Yes, uh, I remember correctly, back on February 10th, I was the only one that opposed the bill in committee. And I uh, will oppose the bill no matter how it's presented. And I will would like to do a minority report and I will speak on the floor about this bill. Okay. So uh, Norm, this is Pat. Yes, Pat. 
I mean, if we vote on the amendment, I'm going to vote against the amendment. But if the if the body wants the amendment, I will vote yes on the bill with the amendment. I mean, I'm not, it doesn't mean I'm not going to vote for the amendment. Uh, uh, when we do the OTP with amendment, I will vote for the bill with the amendment. Um, but after hearing all of what we just heard, I, I'm still not convinced that the amendment is needed. Mm -hmm. But again, I will vote for the bill with the amendment if that's what we wind up. If the if the bill, the amendment does pass, then I will I, I will vote against that. But uh, then I will vote for the bill with the amendment. All right, um, Chair. May I add? This is Dennis Malloy. Um, most of the people on who sponsored the bill are in this room, or in this chat, uh, are in this in a Zoom, with the exception of Speaker uh, Packard. And uh, I think we have we can dispense we can decide this now with the folks that are who are uh, sponsors of the bill. Seems to me. How many would like to take the vote now? Use your hand function. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say something too, if I could. Uh, yes. Ms. Representative Nunez. Go ahead, Representative Nunez. Uh, I, I believe I'm, I want to get back to the root of this. This amendment came up because the DRA was having problems with some of the language. So an amendment came out and it, and it didn't quite hit it, but we went back and worked with the DRA and they said that this would help them in their uh, making their rules and that it would clarify things for them. Um, she also just said to us just a few minutes ago that she didn't know if that last line that we were looking at in there on that D line or whatever it was, was going to cause come out of OLS differently than what's expected. Until we see the actual amendment come out of OLS and know the way that it's been legally worded by um, the legal team in there, then, then I think we're sort of voting on something right now that we're not seeing the true amendment yet. We're just seeing the words that were sent. As we all know, OLS changes things sometimes when it gets there. So until we see the amendment, can we not vote on this until we see the actual amendment? I, I Mr. Chairman, um, everybody's got their hands up for a kind of straw vote at this point, and we can't tell who wants to talk to them. Okay. Let's, I, f I forgot what the, uh, the question was on this the last straw vote. Mr. Chairman, the question, the question was, can we not do this until we see the actual amendment mm -hmm. that's my question because uh, as was stated earlier when it's got to go to ols and we need to make sure that it comes out of ols with the intention provided and we don't know that that's what's going to happen because of one line that's in there although the assistant commissioner did state to us just a few minutes ago that she wanted to look at that line as well to make sure that it comes out correctly uh, until we have that language that's back from them in an actual amendment, then I, I, my suggestion is let's wait for the amendment. Okay. I think we just. Uh, I, 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 I support that. Oh, me too. Uh, I just want to have Carol. Let's just vote next Wednesday, Norm. Yeah. Is that. Mr. Chairman? No. Wait a minute. I want to have Carolyn explain something again. Carolyn, without the amendment, do you. Do we need the amendment to accomplish this, what the intent of the bill is? Carolyn. Representative Major, thank you for the question. Uh, I'll, I'll answer while rephrasing it slightly. Um, I don't believe that you need the amendment in order to ensure that the fees paid to travel agents by operators as commissions are not subject to the tax. I think it is clear as the legislation is drafted without an amendment that those fees are not subject to tax. 
Thank you. I'm going to hold this until the 10th. And okay. can you get your amendment. And I also, um, personally, I agree with the commissioner, but I'm holding this until the 10th. You'll have an opportunity to look at the amendment and we will vote on it on the 10th. Okay, that was a good discussion. Uh, anybody else want to say anything else? I just want to remind you that I had emailed you the information I received from the Finance Committee relative to the sections on House Bill 2 that we need to look at. Now, when I looked at on the internet, House Bill 2 is up on the internet. Huh. And, uh, but it's like a, a lot of pages, I think 170 pages or so. And you can either do one of two things, either get a copy over it at, at, uh, at the LOB or try to work with it on the internet or just download those specific pages. But not only looking at those sections that they told us about, what I would do as a minimum, I would go to House Bill 2 and download and print the first six pages. The first six pages is the, is the analysis because there may be other sections there that weren't identified. Because I don't really want to be surprised the last minute there were some sections that weren't identified by finance that uh, we need to do a, a quick analysis on. I'd rather analyze these things right now rather than wait to the last minute. So there's a lot of homework to do. Become familiar with House Bill 2. Any questions? Or comments for anything. There's a couple hands up. Okay, yeah, Representative Spillsbury. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I may be confused. This is a new topic, but I've lost track of what happened to House Bill 565. Uh, this is uh, Representative Ames' bill to establish a committee to study charitable gaming. Uh, the notes that I made indicate that we approved OTP 240 and agreed to put it on consent calendar. But looking at the consent calendar uh, in the house record February 19th that we acted on last week in session, I don't see that uh, HB 565 was on there. And I'm, have I lost track of it or did it somehow administratively get overlooked? No, it did not get overlooked. It didn't get to the schedule and time to get on that calendar. So it will be on the new, the next calendar. And Thank you. Thank you. There's a 24 to zero vote about to pass. Yeah. Anything else? No, I'm Pat. Yes, Pat. Uh, is there any way Jennifer can help us with the HP2 extracting of ways and means portion of it? General four. Yeah, I'll talk to her. That, that'd be helpful. Yeah. And there's a lot of things. And the easiest way is, is to go to the analysis okay. and start there. But <clears throat> make sure you cover all the points that the finance committee sent to us. And then we'll also take care of those other five bills. Those other five bills that were second committee bills, you'll look at them. We will not touch the policy. We're not going to debate the policy that's been passed by the House. We're only going to, to look at those parts that have to do with revenue. There may be a bill 10 pages and nine and a half pages is policy. So you have to find where it is. 
and I plan to go through it and I'll send you out an email, which I think is areas you need to look at. And that's for, we need to vote on that on the 10th. So they need to be reported out on the 11th. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. On two things. I think that we have until, we have until the 18th for the second committee bills. That's, that's in the, the deadlines in the calendar. Yes, and, right, we have uh, until the 18th for the second committee bills, right? Yes, and the second uh, thing is that at least one of those bills we have because on, they took the fees out of it in the committee, but they left in the uh, dedicated fund, the rating of the dedicated funds in order to pay for the database that they want. And that rating was supposed to be recompensed by the fees that they took out. So the question that we're looking at is what do we think of, of the uh, stability of those dedicated funds? And the rules have dedicated funds in our committee. And we're going to have to address that in that committee. And the rest of the rest of that bill, uh, if it's strict policy, we don't touch it. Anything else? Representative Elliott has his hand raised. Uh, Representative Elliott. Yes, uh, there's been so much confusion over uh, this bill that I uh, see no problem with us, uh, both parties having a, a caucus on how they feel about this. Um, and I suggest that we hold off. I like the idea of, of postponing it to the 10th, but I would prefer to have a Republican caucus and the Democrats can have one too to exactly what it is we're voting on because there's so much confusion on this amendment and the bill, obviously, that I think we need to spend a little bit more time on it privately as the Republicans and as Democrats. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Elliott. Anything else? Uh, and I would encourage you all Keep your eyes out for anything that's going to change the economic conditions that would result in our revenues going one way or the other. And also, this new stimulus package, once it's passed, we need to understand what that's going to do to us. If there's no other hands raised, then gee, we get out of here early today. Thank you. And we're not scheduled for tomorrow. And I get my shot this afternoon.